हेलो एवरी वन ऐ एम डॉक्टर शशि मौली कंसलटेंट एंडोक्रेन सर्जन श्री शंकर कैंसर हास्पिटल बैंगलूर ऐ एम डॉक्टर पलवी कंसलटेंट न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन फिजिशियन वर्क्स इन श्री शंकर कैंसर हास्पिटल बैंगलूर टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्क इन ब्रीफ अबउट थैराइड नॉड्यूल अंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट सो मैडम हाउ आफन डू यू एनकाउंटर दिस थैराइड नॉड्यूल as we know thyroid nodules are uh, uh, seen in 5% of the general population not all thyroid nodules are malignant so most of the thyroid nodules are uh, non malignant like 95% of the uh, thyroid nodules so only 5 to 10% thyroid nodules are malignant so i would like to ask about the predisposition and risk factors for the thyroid nodules so uh, as uh, madam has told this uh, Uh, the thyroid cancer is seventh most common uh, uh, cancer in whole world and um, the predisposing factors or any risk factors include usually uh, age females then uh, obesity uh, this occurs usually in the age group of 30 to uh, 50 years but then it can happen even before and uh, later on in the age Uh, also uh, some radiation exposure radiation hazards are there so which can uh, be a predisposing factor for uh, thyroid uh, cancer uh, also some genetic uh, syndromes are there which are very rare but yes it uh, also can uh, be associated with thyroid cancer now uh, coming to the symptoms <coughs> so the symptoms the patient usually presents with a uh, nodule in the neck or swelling in the neck be it in the center or in the one side of the neck now once such patient comes usually uh, they do come with some of the reports saying that this is a thyroid nodule or else we do a clinical examination to find out if it is thyroid nodule or not along with that uh, during examination we also have some uh, clinical tests to have a suspicion that if it is a malignancy or not including some lymph nodes are involved or not like that and if it is locally uh, uh, aggressive like stuck to the other structures so depending on this we have some suspicious features after this we uh, send the patient for uh, ultrasound test sir how do we further uh, produce, uh, proceed uh, with the thyroid nodule once they present to you yeah so uh, what we do is we get uh, ultrasound that is the first uh, basic uh, uh, test to know what sort of a nodule or uh, in the thyroid it is Uh, in uh, ultrasound we do get to categorize into various uh, uh, there is a scoring system in which we know that whether it is going more towards a benign or a malignancy uh, depending on that uh, we get a, a fine needle aspiration cytology that is fnac it is a needle test from the uh, nodule which is suspicious and then that is sent to pathologist to see under a microscope and then they categorize it either into a benign or a malignancy Uh, and then we further uh, investigate if in case uh, any further test locally advanced or anything is there we do an extra uh, imaging like ct scan or mri but not every patient requires that uh, then accordingly uh, whether the patient also presents with the hypo or hyperthyroidism features then we have to get some blood tests for thyroid uh, uh, function and then uh, we once the report is out we'll uh, discuss with the patients sir how do we uh, uh, treat these patients what kind of surgery or chemotherapy or radiation therapy what kind of uh, so, treatment we give yeah so first uh, first of all when we get the uh, fnac report the needle test report uh, we'll get to know whether it is benign that is non cancerous or cancerous only a set of uh, few patients will have uh, will fa- uh, fall into neither benign nor uh, cancer this are treated in a very uh, unique way so if it is benign and the patient has uh, no other symptoms per se and if it is a smaller nodule like less than 4 cm does not have any compressive features like difficulty in swallowing or any voice change so we can j- still wait and watch for some patients but it has to be very selective it has to be proven that it is non cancerous but for those where we get it is suggestive or suspicious of any cancer the treatment is definitely a surgery the surgery depends on how big is the nodule and how many uh, nodules are there whether all are suspicious 
and also depends on some lymph node involvement in that way we proceed for surgery so uh, once the surgery is done we send this uh, uh, removed uh, thyroid gland and uh, along with the tumor uh, to what we call as a biopsy or histopathology once that uh, report comes usually it is available in around one week's time so once that is available uh, the most common thyroid cancer is a differentiated thyroid cancer which comprises almost like 80 to 85 percent of the thyroid cancers depending on that then we plan for further so usually they require iodine therapy as an adjuvant so madam uh, can you please elaborate on uh, iodine therapy so usually once the surgery is done so patients comes to our department where we uh, categorize them into low risk intermediate and high risk depending upon the histopathology then blood markers and other uh, whole body uh, radioactive iodine scans so usually low risk patients doesn't require much treatment so intermediate risk patients requires treatment uh, that depends upon the blood markers and uh, whole body uh, radioactive iodine scans uh, results if nothing is there if blood markers are normal then no treatment is required for intermediate risk patients also then if, if for intermediate patients where blood markers is a little bit high uh, then uh, radioactive iodine scan shows some we call it as uptake uh, so in the scan results where it shows uptake those patients requires uh, treatment so we usually give them low dose that is uh, called as 30 millicuri uh, that is the radioactive iodine dose then comes to the high risk patients high risk patients are those where it has spread uh, beyond the thyroid gland like lymph nodes or lungs or uh, bones or other uh, organs uh, usually if it is in the lymph nodes we have a particular fixed dose like 100 milliquiry we will give so the, if it is uh, say if it has spread to lungs or other organs then we have to give some two to three settings that is uh, within a gap of six months uh, so madam uh is this uh, something uh, radiotherapy or is it different from radiotherapy and do these patients also require some chemotherapy uh, this is different from radiation therapy uh, in radiation therapy they give externally the radiation so here radioactive uh, iodine which we is nothing but which we use uh, normal iodine in the food for that uh, normal iodine only we are tagging radioactive material it will be in the liquid form it will be tasteless, colorless and we will ask the patient to drink. It will be like uh, uh, water. So this is different from radiation therapy. And this patient doesn't require chemotherapy. Uh, and radiation therapy also uh, is indicated only in specific cases where it is locally advanced or some other uh, uh, conditions where uh, it has, if it has spread to bone then it is causing pain then we will give radiation uh, therapy for the particular region. So this, these uh, particular patients uh, does not usually require chemotherapy. Okay. And uh, do you think that these patients who are undergoing iodine therapy have hair fall or any other side effects per se? No sir, there are no major side effects with radioactive iodine. So only some patients might experience some gastritic symptoms that too rarely we have encountered and uh, with this treatment there are no history uh, where patient complains of hair fall and uh, there won't be any skin changes, there won't be any um, uh, weight loss once we give radioactive iodine. It is normal iodine only where we are tagging radioactive material. So once this is done, so how do you follow up madam? Sir, usually uh, whatever the risk category, the follow-up is like once in six months, we will ask the patient to come once in six months. Once we give radioactive iodine, from next day onwards, we will start them on suppressive dose of uh, thyroxine uh, tablet. So we will ask them to continue for six months. Then after six months, we will ask them to stop for three weeks. Then we will ask them to get the blood test the blood markers and whole body iodine scan and uh, your ultrasound neck. So with that we usually do the follow up. So once everything is clear in low risk category we will ask them to come once a uh, year for another 5 consecutive years. Then in intermediate risk also same once a year and for another 5 years. In case of high risk we will ask them to follow for once in 6 months. So that is depending upon the uh, spread where it has spread to 
uh, which organs then we'll categorize them and then we'll do the follow -up. so uh, now this is regarding the differentiated thyroid cancers why we are uh, discussing about this is even though this thyroid cancer is uh, seventh most common if treated properly the mortality due to this thyroid cancer only comes almost 24th in number that means among all the cancers this comes almost like in 24th number due to the mortality that is the deaths due to this particular cancer it's very minimal or very less so if treated early and properly the survival rates are almost like uh, more than 95 to 98 percent this is the reason why we are discussing this particular uh, thing here in case of any uh, further uh, queries you can always reach to us at uh, Sri Shankara Cancer Hospital Bangalore uh, also uh, to know about these things uh, in few more languages like uh, Hindi, Tam uh, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, uh, Bengali there are few more videos uh, where the description the link description will be given uh, along with this uh, video so you can also go through that uh, to know more about in your language which you know